really once you begin to think about what type of business you want or thinking about growing your business, there's going to be some strategies, some tips and tools that you can use in order for you to make great decisions and assess before you decide to either invest a lot of money and time into either a service or a product for your business. So we really want to have you understand the importance of market research, how this can help you as an entrepreneur, uh, compare and contrast primary and secondary sources of data and information, um, and utilize all of this to create a tool that essentially is going to allow you to loop back and forth on how you can design and, and um, test either a product or a service that you want to implement or grow within your business, right? Many times we, we may think of, of an idea that we want either to sell or to provide a service, but um, only to find out once we are in the midst of, of this environment, maybe the product is not selling as you intended to, right? Uh, maybe the service is not you know, being accessed by your clients or your customers. So um, this is going to allow you to take a step back, bring in information that you can use to assess, and then execute on how you want to implement this moving forward for your business. Before moving forward, I do want to cover um, some essential vocabulary as we're going to be using some of this terminology in today's um, workshop. Uh, so first and foremost, market research, right? This is really an organized way for you to gather and analyze information so that you can make the best decision for your business. Uh, we're gonna be covering two sets of data. Primary data, which is new information that is collected for a particular purpose. Uh, and this is directly obtained from your potential customers. Secondary data is another uh, terminology that we'll use. And secondary data is existing information that was either previously gathered from your client or customer or a specific study that has been conducted by either a government agency or another educational institution like a university, right? Um, we also have iterative design. Iterative design is going to be a cyclical approach or a, or a loop per se, uh, to building, testing, learning, and also refining your product or a service so that you can make it to your business. Uh, your business should be fluctuating. It's gonna grow depending on the trend, services, and needs. Um, <clears throat> we're also gonna be talking about the MVP, which is a minimum viable product. And this is a prototype or first attempt to build out an idea quickly and cheaply um, so that the owner, the entrepreneur, gets a chance to test those products and get feedback from your direct customers or potential customers. Okay. And then uh, we're also, uh, another key word here is product market fit. So a degree to which your product or service satisfies a need or a want that is held by your target customer base, right? Uh, many of you here are opening a business or have a business and you have a very specific niche to your clientele, to your customers. So really exploring what that is um, in order to be able to make really good decisions on your business growth. Okay, so what do we really know about this topic of lead market research? Um, by now, many of you have already brainstormed different types of business ideas, right? Some of you already have an existing business. Um, some of you have already talked or, or began to explore using a tool called a SWOT analysis. That is S-W-O-T. And we're going to dive uh, briefly into that in the next slide. Uh, but the SWOT analysis allows you to really deeply examine your opportunities or, or to be opportunities in your business. And knowing your strengths, your weaknesses, opportunities, your threats, all of these steps are vital. Um, but right now you may be at a stage where you're operating maybe under assumptions, right? If you have a, a, a to be business, you might have assumptions about the products or services that you're gonna provide. And it's gonna, you know, you maybe you think I'm gonna be 
become a millionaire out of this, right? Um, again, those are assumptions. Maybe you have an existing business, but want to add a new product, right? Um, you don't want this to just be based on assumptions, right? A lot of the times when we assume a business owners can make some very crucial mistakes or errors, um, making an incorrect assumption can lead to wrong decisions and impact your time and your finances and of course your, your leverage to grow your business, okay? And we wanna get rid of assumptions. We really wanna take a smart approach into um, expanding our business services or products. So in today's topic, we're gonna discuss a little about some tool sets that you can use and some questions you begin to ask yourself um, and, and building a robust market research. Now, as I mentioned, I, I talked about SWOT analysis. So I'd like to invite everyone to take this refresher. Um, this is something you may have seen in um, your online modules through Nifty. Um, and you have a, a moment to assess your business or to be business strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, what does this mean? Um, up on the screen here, I have a short description um, to what each of these bubbles per se um, actually mean. So your strengths is really all about what your company does best. What is that niche? What is that product? What is that service that your business does really well, right? Um, weakness, what are your most weak, uh, weakest aspect of your business. Um, opportunities. Have you explored opportunities to grow, right? Hey, uh, I know if I have this particular um, environment, if I have this particular building, if I have this particular clientele, then I'm able to do, you know, something in the upwards momentum. So explore what those opportunities can be. And of course, your threats. This is a situation, an event, a direct competitor, right? Um, coming into the the world of entrepreneur, you're going to have competition. So how can you assess where your business currently is, your competitors and other sets of data and information in order for you to make um, viable decisions for your business, right? So this particular tool set is, is one thing that you can um, use in order to assess these four um, areas of your business. And the reason why I bring this up is because we're going to somehow integrate this piece into uh, your market research. Now, what is market research and why is this important, right? Um, this takes us back to what I spoke about assumptions. We don't want to just assume um, have something start and then only to realize that it, it's not up to par. Um, so instead of just working very hard in a certain idea, it's better to work smart. So market research is one great way that you can organize um, and analyze information. This is going to allow you to make better business decisions. Um, it can give you information about your direct customers, your competition, and your business environment. And there's three main um, areas in which market research helps entrepreneurs. And the first one is avoid making costly mistakes, uh, especially if you're a startup, you know, there's not a lot of cash flow. There's not a lot of, you know, you don't have a lot of resources at that point. So sometimes taking a market research approach can allow you to make valuable decisions that are not going to impact uh, the cost of your, your operations, okay? Uh, second reason why it's important is because it helps you to obtain financing, right? Um, it's much easier to attract investors like banks or other companies. If you have done the research, you know what you're doing, you know what you're getting yourself into, and you've already thought and projected what are some positive business outcomes, right? And lastly, um, it allows you to create a successful product design. So 
products and services, you can design these to align to the wants and the needs of your immediate customers. Um, and that is, you know, that is only information that you're gonna be able to take once you start digging into um, doing some work, right? And, and doing research, talking to your customers, your clients, and then getting answers back. So we talked about market research and why that's important. Now let's talk about how we can obtain some of these research data points. Um, and early in the presentation, we talked about two sets of data points. The first one is primary, the second one is secondary, right? And as you begin to ask yourself questions about your product, your services, your business, um, you want to begin to think about the approaches or the steps that you're gonna take in order to get that information, right? Answer to those questions. Um, and both sets of data are very important. And the first one, which is primary research, this helps you test your assumptions about your customers by asking them directly, what is it that you want? What is it that you need? What is it that you like? What is it that you don't like, right? Often this um, qualitative data is going to give you information on how your customer feels about your product or your service, right? So if you know how they feel, you can start quickly making adjustments. Um, the second set of data is um, it's going to save you time from having to collect and analyze data on your own. Um, there's many... Um, avenues that you can take in order to also acquire secondary research, whether it's from a university, um, other companies that have done you know, their own research, you look at publications, uh, trade magazines, right? Um, and this is going to give you um, data on potential customers, right? So these individuals are already in the market purchasing services or goods from other uh, businesses, but you wanna find out how you can gain that clientele for your venture. Okay. I'm gonna play a quick two minute video, which is going to give some examples and talk briefly a little bit more about obtaining this primary and secondary uh, source of data. Hello, my name is Emily, and today I will be illustrating what market research is and the difference between primary and secondary resources. Marketing research provides businesses with information they need to make informed decisions. When conducting market research, you will encounter two types of resources, primary and secondary. In this video, you will learn about these resources and how to differentiate between the two. Primary research refers to collecting data that has not been gathered before. Secondary research is the use of data that has already been collected through primary research. For example, Julia works for Starbucks. Julia is trying to convince her company that selling pumpkin spice lattes all year round will increase Starbucks revenue by a significant amount. To back up her claim, Julia turned to market research and sought out Starbucks enthusiasts to hold in-depth interviews and looked at industry, sales, and financial reports. Julia now has an abundance of research to assess her conclusion. But which of these are primary resources and which are secondary resources? By personally interviewing Starbucks enthusiasts, it would be a primary source because you were the first person to experience that discussion. Conversely, if you watched a video of an interview, that would be considered a secondary source because the interviewee was the first person to experience that dialogue. By looking at industry sales and financial reports, this would be considered a secondary source because you were not the original collector of this information. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and share this video by clicking below. Happy researching! Okay. One second here. 
Great. So very briefly, this video just gave us a little bit of insight on the two different types of secondary versus primary sources of data, right? And in just a moment, I'm going to be able to test your or do a little mini quiz in which I'm going to test your understanding um, so that you get a better feel on the different types of primary and secondary sources of data. So here on the screen, if you can all uh, look at the bullet points one through six, we're going to take a moment to categorize um, each of these. So we're not going to take very long. Um, if you do have access to the chat, feel free to put in your answer in the chat. If you don't, that is okay. You can make a side note, write it down on the side of um, paper uh, with a pen and pe pencil, uh, and then we'll, we'll go through it together. Um, so here we have trade publications, online articles, government agency studies, focus groups, face-to-face -face interviews, and visits to competitor locations. Um, let's take a moment and go down the list. For number one, trade publications, would you classify that as a secondary or primary source of data? I'll give you all about five to 10 seconds to type in your answer or just think about it. Trade publications. The trade publication is an example of secondary. Okay. Now, online articles. When it comes to online articles, would you classify that as secondary or primary? Okay. Online articles would also be a source of secondary data. Um, item number three, government agency studies. This can be a report from the U.S. Small Business Administration on economic impact, right? This is classified as a secondary source of information. Okay. Now, number four, focus groups. When it comes to focus groups, this is a session with a group of potential customers who discuss their preferences, buying behaviors, opinions about handmade, pro you know, handmade items. Number four, focus group would be an example of a primary, primary set of data. Face-to-face okay. -face interviews, right? You're meeting face-to-face -face with your client, a potential customer. You're learning about their likes or dislikes. How was the product used? How was the service, right? This is an example of a primary data source. And finally, visits to the competitor's locations, right? You want to check on your competition. You visit their establishment. You're looking at their prices. You're looking at their products. You're looking at how they provide service to their, their clients. This is also considered a primary set of data. Okay. So these are all areas to consider as you begin to do your fair share of market research. Okay. Here we have a few more examples of primary research data. Okay, so you want to consider doing a survey or questionnaires to your potential clients. Um, interviews, right, is another great way to receive information, focus groups, your individual observations, um, customer feedback and reviews about a product or service. Maybe it's a physical product uh, like a phone or a gadget. You want to do some usability testing, right? Hey, you know what? This doesn't necessarily work for left-handed um, people. You might want to consider making some adjustments to your designs, right? Or, or doing two sets of, of, of test products that caters to both right-handed and left-handed people. Um, if you run services like programs, whether it's educational um, or other sources uh, or, or modes of services, you can do a pilot program, right? Uh, In-depth case studies, uh, customer journey mapping, and diary, uh, diary studies can also be some areas for primary research. Some examples of the secondary research data uh, can be industry reports. Um, government publications, academic research in journals through university, colleges, 
uh, trade associations, and the list goes on and on. Financial reports, sales, and data market metrics. Uh, most of this information you can accumulate uh, by going to sources online and doing some digging and investigation and be able to utilize this to your advantage. We talked about the SWOT, um, asking yourself some, some questions on how you can obtain some data sources. Um, this next slide here is about um, an interactive design and oh, actually an iterative design, excuse me, I did a typo there. Uh, iterative design and the minimal viable product. So. This particular chart here is a tool that entrepreneurs can use to essentially create a loop in order to test and assess and get some information on the products or services. So this iterative design is going to give you an approach to um, make improvements as you're going along. So this is for testing your assumption, right? Maybe you're thinking to yourself, hey, I know if I am, if I bring in this particular specific product into my uh, sales floor, it's going to sell X amount of money, right? That's an assumption. But once you begin to dig into your research and gather information from both primary and secondary sources, you will um, be able to take a more uh, smart approach to making those decisions. Um, <clears throat> and you want to note that this minimal viable product or the MVP, this is a prototype or a first attempt to build quickly and cheaply an idea so that you get to learn about what the potential outcome of the product or service can be. Okay. Um, and if you notice, or if you take a look at the bottom of the chart, this is your market, right? So determine who your targeted customers are. You as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, um, should know who your customer base is, right? Uh, many individuals will say, well, we'll ask them the question, well, who is your customer, right? They'll say, well, everyone. Well, not everyone is your customer, right? Uh, you have a very specific niche, although we all want everyone to buy our products and services. We, we do have, for each of our um, businesses, a unique or a niche uh, clientele. So you need to determine who your target customers are, okay? Now, once you know who your customer base is, you need to identify what their needs, what is their want, right? So that you can begin to make product or service decisions based on that. So once you have a keen idea and generalize who your market is, then you can begin on building out that product, right? Um, but first, the foundation is the market. Without the market, your product is not necessarily going to fit in. Um, so once you begin to think about, okay, let me define my product. Let me specify what this product is going to be. You can then um, work your way up to testing um, that particular product, right, or, or service. Um, but you can use this particular chart or, or tool to, again, begin to dive deep into the, the purpose and the mission of what you're currently trying to implement, change, or add to your business. Um, here we have a couple of assumptions about your minimum viable product. Um, remember that your MVP is not your first version of the product. This is just a feedback tool. So this is not to be used as, you know, hey, uh, this is my prototype A, B, and C. Uh, again, this is just a, a, this is gonna be a continuously um, living, breathing tool set as you begin to get your answers, right? And solidify an outcome. So this is gonna help you achieve your product market to help your product or service match with the services and needs for your targeted customers. And what you should really be testing within your MVP is what is the real customer need? 
what is going to be ultimately the cost of your product, right? And number three, the duration of those services. And you want to be sure to test as you begin to assume, you ask yourself questions, put it to the test and implement it so that you can begin to um, have some concrete outcomes that you can use in your data sets. A few examples of a minimal viable product can be a landing page. You create a landing page for your, your product or service. Um, it can be a web page. It can be an application, uh, whether it's a program. Um, if you have a physical product, like let's say you want to test out a toy, right? Um, you might want to, instead of going out and, and mass producing uh, 100,000 units that at the end of the day, you find out, hey, this product is not selling and now I have inventory and a warehouse full of these toys that I can't sell. You know, maybe doing a little bit of market research, implementing an MVP could have reduced or mitigated some of those challenges moving forward. Um, sometimes just doing a sketch, doing a story, um, what do you call it, a story map, um, or some other areas in which you can begin to draw out your MVP. What your MVP can do for you as an entrepreneur, it's going to, again, allow you to test your products with minimal resources. It's going to accelerate your learning, right? You're going to learn so much about what works and what doesn't work to your clientele. It's going to reduce waste development and hours and expenses and finances. Um, it also allows you to get the product early to potential customers, right? You can um, do a, a prototype that they can test. You get feedback. Um, and it gets, it's really going to give you a base for a complete product. I want to give you all a little scenario um, and, and think about how you can begin to ask yourself questions and formulate or draw out an MVP for your business. Uh, so in this scenario, um, here we have an entrepreneur by the name of Serene. And Serene is thinking about starting a business that delivers breakfast to homes of busy families before work and school. Uh, customers will use an app to place an order the night before. And she has identified some questions about this business idea, right? Um, some of the questions that this person may be asking themselves can be, you know, are people going to be using the application, you know, um, are people going to enjoy the food that I'm making, right? Um, so think to yourself as, as you know, you, you, you take in the story, what kind of MVP, what kind of minimal viable product could Serene create to test her assumptions, right? Um, a, she can create a sample menu. B, Serene can create a storyboard of the customer experience. Uh, C, Serene can also uh, have breakfast delivered to a prospective customer's home, right? Maybe give a free sample to a potential customer. Um, those are three potential steps that Serene can take in order to begin learning about the product that, that and the idea that she's looking to implement, right? Um, question two here, we have testing Serene's assumptions with an MVP would be an example of either A, primary research, or B, secondary research. And of course, testing Serene's assumptions will be an example of a primary research, right? Because if you have an assumption, you have not collected any information yet, this is going to be your first attempt into either speaking with a client um, or, or having the first contact on learning about an outcome, okay? So going back to, again, Serene's story of, of building a, an application that can assist individuals that have busy um, calendars to, to be able to order food, um, Serene could also look at the competitor's websites to see 
how they structure their services, right? Looking at another competitor's website, this is an example of secondary research, right? Um, there's already established information. There's probably customer testimonials there that can give some, some really good um, information to what Serene can either implement or do better um, for her business. Okay. Other questions that Serene may be asking herself um, before implementing the service is, will customers like the feature of ordering the night before? Uh, would a customer rather order through an app or by phone? What does it take to start up or, or an app-based business, right? Um, how many potential customers can I possibly have? How many of our customers will be willing to pay for this service, right? Um, so those are questions, again, that you want to ask. Don't assume yet, but use those to inject into your MVP and create a solid plan so that you can begin to gather data and make the best approach for those decisions, okay? Okay, now getting started with your MVP, first you wanna choose a format or just a format that you're gonna use for your prototype. Um, if your chosen method does not turn out to be as effective or testing your assumptions, you can always change your method, okay? One method might not work, but you can try multiple. Um, a few other common ways you can begin building an MVP, creating a plan is drawing a sketch, uh, make it by hand, create a storyboard, um, build a prototype. Maybe if you have a specific you know, physical item, you can choose to get it 3D printed print out a couple of units for a couple hundred dollars instead of having to mass produce, you know, uh, uh, an item that may not sell eventually and you waste time and money. You can create apps using wireframes, mock-up websites, um, or Photoshop an existing image, okay? Here in this slide, I have effective MVP tools for entrepreneurs. So at the end of, of today's presentation, you will all receive a copy and you can access this slide to play around with different types of tools you can use in order to create your MVP, have great lean market research that is going to be readily available to you and how you can make some decisions to grow and make adjustments to your business to either sell a product, add a new service, or completely just you know, expand the branches and avenues on, on where your business can, can head. Okay. Today, we're going to talk about um, competitive advantage. What is competitive advantage? Here's an overview of what I got going on. Like I said, I only have few, a few minutes, so I will try to run through it. Um, we're going to discuss the vocabulary. Again, what is competition? What is competitive advantage? We're going to analyze the competition, how to, how to analyze the competition, excuse me, and identify potential differentiators. That's a really, 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 really good um, topic, if not my favorite, because it really helps us stand out. We're also going to distinguish between the different types of competition and use a competitive matrix. And I will show you how to do all of that. Um, here is our essential vocabulary. Um, I advise everybody to, again, take a screenshot, learn, learn these very basic, but they differentiate little, a little bit. When uh, doing research for this workshop, I found that everything is very repetitive. Um, the name of the game is standing out, in my opinion, that's what I think, and how we can do that by analyzing our personal business, analyzing the competition, and again, figuring out how to stand out. Um, so competitive advantage, I'll just run through these really quick. What is it? Uh, it's something that puts your business ahead of the game. Um, we're going to talk about the competitive matrix competitors, you know, even though, or I think that unless you have created a vehicle that runs on thin air, you're going to have competition. 
from skincare, um, market research companies, vehicles, anything, unless you come up with an idea that is completely new to, to the world where people are just going to be shocked that such thing exists, competition is going to exist no matter what. And then we have direct and indirect competition. Uh, what industry is strong direct competition and weak competition, and we'll go over those. I also have a little video, two minute video about the point of view of your client, of your consumer, and how they view competition, how competition can influence um, your business and also serve them. So let me go ahead and play that for you guys. Competition among businesses plays a crucial role in creating and sustaining a healthy economy, and the payments industry is no exception. When businesses compete with each other, a lot of great things happen. Consumers benefit from competition. With several companies competing against each other, consumers have the ability to choose which one is right for them. If one company sets its prices too high, consumers can simply change providers to save money. If one company's products are better than the competition, consumers can choose to give their business to that company. Companies need to take good care of their customers or they risk losing them to the competition. Competition also benefits businesses. When businesses are forced to compete with each other, they must work hard to innovate to make sure that their products are state-of-the-art and the best that they can be. Competition also encourages businesses to fine-tune operations to run more efficiently. This helps reduce operating expenses and keeps prices low. By constantly innovating and fine-tuning, businesses ensure that they will continue to keep a competitive edge when faced with changing market conditions. Competition is also good for governments. When businesses compete, it drives economic growth. Creating a competitive environment also protects consumers from monopolies and price fixing. Fair and competitive markets also create openness and transparency. In order to take advantage of all the benefits of competition, it is crucial that governments allow a level playing field for businesses because businesses competing in a level playing field will be motivated to invest in future growth and innovation. Everyone benefits from the rewards of a healthy economic ecosystem. I was a mute. Okay. Um, please refer back to that video. I think that it really sums up uh, competition. And I, I always tell, especially I, I tell my clients this all the time, I want you to think not as a business, but I want you to think as a consumer. Because... As a consumer, when you adapt that mentality, you understand what your client is looking for. I don't know if you guys have come across those videos and if somebody has, please share in the chat um, where you see these um, influencers, right? They, they, they become huge and so on. And before you know it, they're asking the people, like, what is it that you wanna see? You saw me do X, Y, and Z. You saw me bring my original content to you, but what is it that you wanna see? And they usually ask that question when reviews are declining. So I want you to adapt that mentality from the beginning, especially um, just in this new world where our attention span is so little, we wanna make sure that, um, that we can cater to, to our target audience. And just like Christian said, we want our product to be sold, excuse me, sold, like sold and bought uh, from, by everyone, but we wanna make sure that we can cater to, to the, our specific demographic. Um, so I want you to pay attention to this. I want you to pay attention to direct competition. Who is your direct competitor? Um, who, um, I want you to pay attention to the type of competition that you have depending on your industry. Are your competitors strong, strong competitors? Are they weak competitors? Are, are they indirect competitors? And you can see here, I have some definitions. And if you click on the links, it'll take you um, to, an, to other resources where you can find more information as to what each thing and it dives, uh, dives deep. Okay, moving on. Yeah. Sorry about that. All right. 
So competitive advantage, what is competitive advantage? Again, competitive advantage refers to the factors that allow your company to produce services better or more efficient, cheaply, um, lower cost than your competition. Again, and I'm gonna say this, you're gonna hear me say this over and over and over because a lot of the times I hear clients say, well, the market's really saturated. Yes, the market's gonna be saturated forever. There's billions of people in this world, but you will find your people. Um, so, I, well, okay, let's move forward. Uh, so what contributes to competitive advantage? Here we, two, four, six, we talk about, or I mentioned six, but in reality, as you get to know your business a little better, you're going to see that a lot of other uh, attributes, a lot of, there's a lot of other attributes, a lot of other factors that, um, that attribute to your competition. So we have, uh, cost structure, branding is huge product quality, if not the most important, in my opinion, quality over quantity, I say a lot, distribution network, intellectual property, and customer service is also one of my favorites, and one of the ways that I think that you can stand out dearly, and I also think that customer service is, um, aside from cost, maybe the third reason why a customer will choose you over the competition. So some food for thought, how to, uh, in identifying our competition. I want you to think, and uh, again, take a screenshot. I'm not going to do like a Q and A at this moment, but I do have some homework towards the end. I want you, um, but right now I want you to think about how, um, how is your competition? What qualities have made these competitors strong? Um, I actually got a list of some industries here. Some of you folks that, for instance, apparel, it's a big one, right? Especially with fast fashion. Um, think about what if, I know that we have some athletic apparel, some women's and children's apparel, some luxury apparel um, here, wholesale. What is it about your, or what is it about these other businesses, these big name brands, and I'm not talking about like Mark, uh, Nike or Skims, maybe brands that are still at your level, but what do they have that your business doesn't have at this very moment? What weaknesses do these competitors have that create an opportunity for you? Is their customer service as good as yours? Um, maybe their prices, maybe you guys are selling the same, the same apparel, um, but are they again, do they have the same customer service as you? Maybe they have, they're selling at a higher cost than you, or you can set it at a lower cost. But again, I, I'm going to say this over and over, no matter what the industry, you're always going to have competition and not just in business. Think of it as just your everyday life. You're competing at work for certain responsibilities. Some of us um, you're competing at life, at sports, at everything. So just like how you would visualize that or, or um, go about that in your personal life, you want to apply that to your business as well. So then we're going to analyze the competition, right? We already have a business. We know what our business is. So we're going to, now we have to figure out how our business differentiates from the other businesses. And we can do this through the competitive matrix. What is a competitive matrix? It's a tool used to evaluate and compare different aspects of a business. Um, we'll touch a little bit on the Lean Canva that is mentioned here towards the end, but the point of this competitive matrix is to be able to identify our differentiators, like I mentioned in the beginning. And we do this by creating this little chart. And the next slide, I'll go over um, how to create one of these. And this is very simple. This is a very basic um, slide. And again, as you get to know your business, as you get to know the, your business pros and cons, you're gonna uh, identify a lot of different factors or some of these factors may not uh, apply to you. Um, but this is the template. This is the, the main model here. Um, so for instance, we talk about price, right? We mentioned that earlier. We talked about quality service, location, reputation, delivery method, customer service, and unique factors. How is your competition uh, different? And on this slide, you're gonna use, you're gonna put your business, you're gonna rate it, 
And then you're gonna choose three companies that do essentially what your business is doing. And you're gonna compare those to yours. And if you, again, if you have apparel, um, or actually, you know, let's choose a consulting services. Let's say you have a consulting service and I don't want you to compare yourself to like legal zoom right away, right? Cause these are like big dogs. They've been in the game for a very long time, but you can find out other comp uh, companies that are doing uh, consulting services within a, a radius of your business and identify how you can, um, how your prices differentiate from theirs, their quality um, of service. Is their location accessible? Do they have parking? Uh, their reputation, you know, you going on Yelp, going on, if, if they have social medias and so on. And then here we'll talk about the step-by-steps in creating this competitive matrix. And um, let me show you guys. Okay, so this is what the chart would look like if I was doing it. I chose Origins as my business. I think it's a great brand. Um, so let's just say, right, um, my product quality is five. It's five. Oh, actually, I went a little too fast. Actually, let me identify this. Let me talk about this. So um, in order to create the competitive matrix, we're going to do these four steps. We're going to list your competitors. Again, don't compare yourself to these huge brands that that is the goal 100 percent. but we want to make sure that we sprint uh we don't want to run we don't want to run yet but we definitely want to sprint we want to take it slow so that we don't trip over ourselves um we're gonna select the comparison criteria as i mentioned with uh, price quality locations and so on and then we're gonna rate them from a one to ten excuse me one to five five being the best and one needing some, um, some work. And I want you to be objective when you're uh, comparing or when you're analyzing your own business. It's great to, um, you know, to hype ourselves and even have our friends and dear family hype us up and tell us um, how great we're doing and so on. But we really wanna make sure that we get um, the best, uh, critique the best constructive criticism as possible because that's the only way uh, that it will really be able to either fix what's broken or leave it alone if it's not. And here I, I also included three links where you can get some pretty good um, some pretty good feedback on certain businesses. You can go to the uh, Be Better Business Bureau, excuse me, or Forbes. Forbes has a great search engine where you can type different articles about, excuse me, where you can look for different articles about different organizations that you might be interested in. Yelp, um, or you can use social media again, you know, TikTok, comment sections, Instagram. Um, Instagram, I believe has, what is it? Where you can polls, you know, um, and then there's a couple other slices where I will show you some free resources where you can get that. Um, and once you identify all these, you're going to be able to find your um, your unique strength, your unfair advantage, right? You're going to look for criteria where your business scores significantly higher, and you're also going to be able to see where you're not compa um, as competitive as the business that you have chosen to compare yourself with. Um, and this is essentially what the chart will look like. So again, I said I chose uh, skincare, I chose origins. Um, and these numbers are completely made up, by the way. Um, this is no, <laughs> this is no um, direct shader or I'm not promoting origins. I should have chosen a different one, but I, I do like the, the brand. So the easiest and cost-effective way to begin your competitive matrix is um, matrix analysis is like, again, pick your competition. And um, when you're comparing your business, again, from a consumer's point of view, look at your product and say, you know, this fabric is not as organic as I would like it to be, or maybe it's been severely processed, or maybe you have a food and beverage um, business and you, how's your customer service? How's your host? Um, do you have, uh, are your prices too high compared to the business down the street um, or the business that's 30 minutes away? 
uh, the reputation of your brand really go in there and I don't know I don't think anybody likes to google themselves at least I know I don't um, but you know google google your business google your business and see what other people are saying about you what are they saying about their business and and respond respond to the community let them know that you hear them that it's not just um, you know you're just ignoring the matter and moving on um, so like I said I chose origin I'm going to give it a five because it's certain products are fully organic and uh, customer service is great. If I have a complaint or if I have a question, they respond immediately, but um, their innovation, hypothetically speaking, they only have two product, two products on the line. They are on the cheaper side. So I'm going to give them a three, the brand reputation. It's, it's great because they're fully organic and their, their delivery speed. I put a two because they don't overnight. Uh, sustainability practices. I put them. A, I put them at a two, but it might it might increase. And then I would compare them with another company whose products are ninety percent organic, so they're rating at a four. Uh, their certain customer service. I put them at a three because they're very rude. You know, I called them recently. I ordered a product from them, and they didn't. They, it hasn't arrived yet, and I wasn't offered any solutions. There was just problems. Gave them a three. Innovation, I give them a four because they have tons of products so they can appeal to a larger audience or maybe they have a product that I don't need at this very moment, but they will in the near future. Their price, I give them a two because they're very expensive, even though their products are not fully organic, they're still more expensive than mine. Brand reputation, this company A is known globally, so I give them a five, their delivery speed a four because you know they do overnight, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna get my product as soon as possible. Um, so again, you wanna make sure that you analyze your business from a consumer standpoint, as honest as possible, and go to those that you can trust, go to those that you value their opinion and ask them, you know, how would you, how would you rate my, my business? Where do you think my business will stand? And if they're familiar with these other companies that you choose to compare yourself with, um, ask them too. You know, have, have you worked with them before? What do you think? Um, how do you have you have you had ex, have you experienced their customer service? What do you think of their price, considering the quality of their product, and so on? Um, and based on your um, your chart here, you'll be able to find differentiators. Um, I really want you to capture your thoughts on this and really ask yourself these questions. And these aren't, in my opinion, they're not, they, take these questions really serious. You know, uh, sit down, I was still, grab a snack, really sit and, and think about um, this because this is going to give you an opportunity not only to figure out how you can differentiate from your clients, um, but also use some of these these answers for your own for your company's marketing um use these answers for um your innovation towards the future and so on um i want to do i want to give an opportunity to anybody if they're interested in sharing the the difference or some different traders within their industry i know that we have some nonprofits. actually i saw a nonprofit for retail that client that um attendee is here I would love to hear how you can you have if not how you think you're different from other nonprofit retailers because it's I think that's actually very niche nonprofit retail anybody okay uh or apparel also I saw that we have a dog dog park bar dog park bar I think that on its own it sounds really cool I've heard of dog cafes, um, dog parks, obviously, but I've never heard of dog cafe, dog bark, dog bark park. <laughs> That's a tongue twister. Um, but anyways, I, I would love to hear if you're here, um, how your business differentiates from a dog friendly cafe, aside from serving alcohol beverages. If they offer, um, you know, activities for your dog um, that can help exercise your dog while you're enjoying enjoying a beverage. Um, again, ask yourself, um, does, will my business differentiate through quality of service? And this was, sometimes these can get a little tricky because when you're starting off, when your business is just kicking off, 
um, we don't have a lot of revenue. You know, we don't have a lot of money. So we try to do things as affordable as possible, which is great. Um, but we want to make sure that we feel proud of the work of the service or the product that we're providing to the community. And with that, um, making sure that, that we don't skip out on certain things that will make us feel proud. So one thing that I've seen a lot is where businesses, and this was back maybe four or five years ago, um, a lot of smoke, a lot of makeup companies were using their packaging as a way to draw people in. And, um, you know, they, they would have these lavish, lavish uh, packaging packages and they would look so pretty. Uh, let's see that there's some questions. We'll get to those questions, I promise. But they had these like really, really beautiful packages and they were selling the same product as, like, you know, same moisturizer as Origins, but the cost was two, three times higher just because their packages were so great. And then other companies really started picking up on that and they noticed how, how it's not eco-friendly and so on. So they like minimal packaging, but the product, the, the quality of the product really represents their mission and their values and so on. So again, really, really sit down and, and think about these questions. And um, if you're not happy with the answer, rewrite it, you know, um, if you feel like you you want to make sure that you you beat everybody through price, but um, it's just not within your budget right now, we'll meet them at, at a different factor. It's not you don't have to meet every single criteria starting off. Um, none of these brands do, and I go back to Nike because I just bought a pair of shoes. But um, none of none of these brands will ever meet any 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 of these criteria one hundred percent. All right, so let's talk about the different types of competition right now. But you know what? Um, I believe I saw a question. I do want to say, will these light sticks, uh, so, will you show these light sticks so we have the questions? Yes, and at the end, I have a, a pretty good worksheet for you guys to take with you and sit down at your the comfort of your home. I know some of you might be driving. Um, some of you are, my, are just hearing my voice. The, uh, these are, it's a great worksheet to really sit down, hone yourself, put some relaxing music, and really ask yourself, how do I differentiate from my competition? Who is my competition? You know, um, but again, different types of, oops, did I skip one? Sorry, guys. Different types of competition. Um, so these are different ways that you can compete with your with your direct competitors or indirect competitors. Again, um, you don't have to meet every single one of them. And I say that because I hear that a lot. Well, they're cheaper or their delivery is faster, but is your customer service as great as yours? You know, um, so costs. Achieving a lowest cost for an operation in the industry, allowing the business to offer lower prices at higher margins. And a big example of this one at this moment, I think it's still Walmart, Walmart is not leading in um, Amazon, right? You can find all these deals and so on. Um, but is the store the cleanest? Um, do people rather shop at at Target instead of Walmart, are their customer service, you know, and that's, I would say Target is one of their main uh, direct competitors or um, Trader Joe's or in uh, Whole Foods. Um, you know, they both essentially have organic, healthy products, but which one will your community feel comfort more comfortable going to? Even though they're very similar and have the same vision and mission, they're still, um, there's still a big, big opportunity for competition. Um, customer service, like I said, providing exceptional service that exceeds um, your customer's expectations, your loyalty, innovation, it's a big one too. My goodness, um, being able to, to move with the trends. And when I say that, I say that, and I wanna emphasize moving with the trend, not in the sense that you're, product quality and your product price and delivery will change considering the, the market, but more so with 
staying trendy, you know, doing the, the trendy videos or the, the trendy marketing and so on. It's maybe switching a, a color or two if, if it applies, but never, never uh, innovating in a way that it impacts the quality of your product. It may seem like that to the consumer at first, right? Like um, I hear this about Apple all the time, like, oh, with the new Apple 15, 16, 17, what are we on right now? But um, essentially not a lot changes, but we think that it does. And, and it's, it's marked at a higher price and uh, it looks great from the outside and everything. But once you get to really nitpick on the storage, on how fast the uh, camera quality and so on, you only see a tiny little margin that change, but they sell it to us at a way, way insane price, in my opinion. Still an Apple user. <clears throat> um, okay, uh, different types of competition continued. Brand strength, operational efficiency is a big one, in my opinion. Streamlining operations to reduce costs and improve productivity. I think that is a great way to be innovative and a great way to stay ahead of your competition. I, earlier, I mentioned the um, being able to deliver overnight delivery overnight shipping and so on. It's great. You know, Amazon has, I think, what is it? Amazon Prime um, allows you to receive the product the next day. And it's not everybody has Amazon Prime, but it's definitely something that it caters to a certain demographic, a certain population. Uh, and it's a way that they stay innovative or with their Amazon Prime dates, June, June July 16th, 17th, so on. Um, also, a different way to stay um, competitive is market niche, you know, finding, um, and this is, this can also be with the exact same product that you have or your service, but being able to target um, and tailor different, different communities that you want to reach with the same product that is being sold to everyone. Um, again, we'll go back to Apple, Samsung, um, Oof, I can't even tell you another brand, um, but they, it's the same service, you know, it's the same cellular device to communicate with others. Um, but it's, it became a niche from, are you a Samsung Android user or are you an Apple user? And um, really figure out what you, you have your target audience, right? And you're selling the same product that everybody else is selling, but how can you cater to your target audience um, in a more um, precise ways? Like for instance, I love um, seafood. I love seafood, I love mariscos. I think it's delicious. And a way that I choose the restaurants that I attend to are by the way that they prepare their, um, their ceviche, their fish ceviche fish ceviche is everywhere right but some restaurants serve it dry some restaurants serve it cold some serve it in a tortada tostada some serve it in soup so they cater to to that niche, that niche that's my personal one when it comes to to ceviche when it comes to seafood and any other so you've identified your target audience how can you cater to your target audience even more um, and a way that you can find this uh, is through Google, excuse me, through some online resources, you know, asking your customers to give you feedback, uh, really hearing them out and what they have to say. Like I said in the beginning, if you somebody leaves a, a constructive critique, you know, respond to it, be thankful that that, that came in. Um, the people, as a matter of fact, the client today came in from a restaurant and mentioned a restaurant that was down the street and immediately, oh, well, how, how was the food? How was the service? Did you like it? Um, and always take it with a, with a positive mindset that these people are telling you their feedback, not just to grow your business or if it's a negative review because they want to hurt your business but just a good a review is a review and it gives us traction and it gives us an opportunity to learn so here are some free resources we have google forms survey monkey is very popular uh type form microsoft forms survey planet and you can click 
I believe I heard in the beginning that you can ask the mayor's office to send you these slides. Um, but if you if you don't get them, uh, if you screenshot them, at least you can type the, the name. And like I said, these are free online resources. And earlier I mentioned the Lean Canva <clears throat> tile. We wanted to find the unfair advantage. Um, I'll just read the Lean Canva is a, strat a strategic management tool that helps entrepreneurs and startups develop and visualize their businesses model into a single page template that captures the key elements of a business. And today we're only focusing on the unfair advantage. Um, but I believe as you go through these uh, workshops, that each workshop would touch on, uh, on, on this a little bit. We're gonna talk about the unfair advantage. So what is the unfair advantage? Completely an advantage. So the name kind of plays a little bit, can play a little bit with your head, but um, in business, an unfair advantage refers to a unique sustainable edge that a company has over its competitors that cannot be easily copied or replicated. And again, you've identified your target audience, right? You want your product or service to be bought by the masses, but you, you have a specific audience. Um, how can you offer them a service that can be replicated? And how, how, you, how you find that is through asking that target audience through the uh, using, utilizing the resources I provided in the last slide. Um, examples of unfair advantage is exclusive partnerships. I think that one is very, very important. It's, you hear this saying all the time, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And, um, you know, in, in business, it, it's true. You wanna make sure that you're building relationships with companies that uh, sell your product where you will buy your product wholesale. Or um, for instance, uh, I saw somebody here had a consulting for tax services, um, uh, DMV services. You wanna make sure that you can build relationships with, with these companies, not MOUs per se, but you know, you go into these places that can offer, can help you expedite certain processes. And I say that specifically to the businesses who are interested in doing DMV services. Um, uh, strong brand, strong brand is a big one. You know, um, again, you want to appeal to to your certain demographics. Um, Nikes, I keep bringing them back. Uh, just do it. You know, I think that appeals to everybody. But the shoes, certain shoes, certain um, cer certain shoes, certain clothes is is bought by specific uh, by specific people with specific athletes. Um, unique resources, um, access to rare resources and materials that are not uh, readily available to the competition, depending on what you sell. Again, apparel, maybe you can build a connection with a company that can give you a great deal on cotton, um, cotton blend at a discounted price. And, you know, you're building that relationship with them directly um, or, or whatever your, your business may be. You know, you got to find out where, where you're going to get your product and building that relationship uh, with them. If you're getting them from online sources like Alibaba or Timu, um, that might be a little bit more difficult, but if it's, um, like I said, like the DMV, if it's certain clothing, apparel, what else do we have here? Um, auto registration, um, mechanics, you know, if you're, your parts, where can you go, building that relationship, making making friends um, at all times. It's not, who, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Um, and then building a customer base, making sure that you're, you're answering your clients' questions at all times. You're, you're asking them again. Uh, and I take it back to influencers nowadays who will constantly come and ask, you know, what is it that you want to see from me? Take that same approach when you feel like you don't know how to innovate your company. It's perfectly normal to ask your audience, what is it that you want to see? And because we are coming, well, we just came up to the six o'clock. I want to provide this, uh, these resources that would spend a little bit more and more detail, the competitive advantage, uh, 10 ways for a business to stand out. I think that one's great. That one's my favorite, very easy read. 
please take a look at it. Um, and then I created the at-home worksheet. Um, I think if you can take anything away from this, or if you didn't get an, an opportunity to look at the slides because you're driving or whatnot, please go home, click this. Um, this is also available to, um, to the program leaders here, and they can, I believe they can email this worksheet for you too.